is the political brown kid here back again and I'm concerned um, I probably have a role to play in it um, I'm not going to even say probably I do have a role to play in what I'm going to talk about I think that the internet has become specifically social media platforms um, in this space when we're talking about male female relationships we're not talking about it from a productive or effective perspective for the most part um, I'm talking to most of us for the most part I try to be consciously but sometimes you do get you know, I guess frustrated in your quote unquote feelings about certain things and sometimes I'm not trying not to be toxic but sometimes it may come off that way so if it does please forgive me but it's just that the space sometimes it there gets to be a lot of toxicity it's, it's um, a few males on, in particular that I listen to you know they want to shut down and talk about divesting from um, you know black females altogether I do not agree with that you know even though that women um we're, we're finding it frustrating dealing with women. Women are finding it frustrating dealing with us. So there's frustration on both parts. I'm not trying to say who's right, who's wrong. I'm not getting into that. But just because there are frustrations don't mean that you ought to start bashing one particular demographic. And, and again, the women are bashing the men. So, But it just seems like when we get into the black space, and I'm specifically speaking for my black people, we tend to be direct. When you listen to um, like the white spaces, and, and one thing I will say is this, white spaces have the luxury of talking in generalities without mentioning race because the ra their race is the default, right? When they talk about Jesus, they're talking about a blonde haired blue eyed Jesus. We have to say black Jesus. Well, they have to um, quantify what we're talking about, black Jesus. When they're talking about the internet, they have to say black Twitter as opposed to just saying, oh, we say that. Oh, black Twitter's going crazy. We have to speak in specifics. And when you look at the internet, when I look at certain um, content creators from, you know, the white space, they speak in generalities. They don't get involved in, you know, hey, let's, let's dump our white women. Let's dump our white men. But we tend to go there. And so what I want to speak to in this regard is how we can, we as men, and if there are women listening to, um, you can um, hopefully have these conversations in the women's spaces or even provide additional context here to help us out, you know, because you can chime in on, on these issues as well. How we in the men's space can tone this stuff down. Because one thing that we do know about women's nature, and please women, correct me if I'm wrong, and also don't get offended if I say something um, from my perspective. Um, if you want to, please provide corrections and or context behind certain things that I say. But please don't get offended. I'm not trying to be offensive. Um, but some things are just truthful, and sometimes the truth may hurt. But the one thing that we do know about women is that women can be emotional. Um we know that when you're arguing or having a debate, a heated debate, an aggressive debate with a woman, um, a woman can, she wants to have the last word or she's going to always have the last word. And I can prove that when you see text between me and my exes or when I'm going back and forth, even when I'm in a relationship, if you text and try to get that last word in, they're going to get that last word in in the text. If you're in a face-to-face in a -face and you're having a verbal communication, they want that last word. We know that women will deny your premise or they will deflect from your premise. If you don't know what that mean, the Republicans um, were good at this in debates. Actually, they coined the phrase. If you listen to conservative radio, it was a cons it was a, a um, political consultants for the GOP. And this was years ago, I think, during the Reagan era. I, I wasn't around during that. I mean, I was around, but I wasn't into politics during that time. I was still relatively young man in my teens, I think. Yeah, in my teens. Ladies, what they say is deny a person's premise. So, for example, if you're in a debate, if a Republican presidential candidate is debating a, a Democratic presidential presidential candidate, if the moderator asks the question or the Democratic person states that global warming is an issue, what the Republican candidate is supposed to do is not accept the premise. You don't say, yeah, we, yeah, global warming is an issue. You don't accept that premise. What you say is you either deny it, say global warming is not an issue. That's a flat out deny. 
So you, you deny the premise and then you state why or you just keep moving. You just deny it or you deflect. You say, well, I'm not here to talk about global warming. What I'm here to talk about is the crime in all these democratic cities. You're deflecting. You're not answering the question. You're not even you're ignoring it and you're moving on to another topic. And women will do that in arguments as well. So they got to have the last word. They're going to deflect. And also, you know that a lot they're going to come from a place of emotion. And just as Kevin Samuels stated, and women, if you're listening, most men are not Kevin Samuels um, converts, should I say. Just like a lot of Trump supporters are not Trump converts. Those individuals existed before Trump came around. It's just as though they felt as though they didn't have a voice to speak on such things. So they just went away and just held out in their hole until Trump came. And then they came out and said, finally, a candidate who's going to keep it real and speak our language. That's what most men felt with Kevin Samuels. At least that's my, my perspective. Kevin Samuels really didn't say anything for the most part, 90 something percent of what Kevin Samuel said, men already knew and or experienced. Like when he talks about shame, guilt, the need to be right and all that other stuff. When we say fit, feminine, friendly and all that other stuff, men have always felt that way. We just probably either never vocalized it or we just weren't heard. And now we're doing so. So I just want to put that out there. So, but we know that when a woman argues, just as Kevin Samuel said, she's gonna. It's gonna be that shame, guilt, the need to be right. It's gonna be insults and so and so thrown. So when you look at these men's spaces, when you start going back and forth with women talking about we need to die vote, and you start specifically saying black women, and you start specifically doing that, you're poking a bear, and you're not getting through to her. She's not listening or resonating with that. That tone doesn't work with her. You, you have to use a different tone. And some tones just not going to work with these people, period. Sometimes you have to do just as us men do when we're when we're in an argument with, with our significant other or debate, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes it's best to just shut down and just say, look, I'm not even I'm going to walk away before this gets out of control. Sometimes it's best to do that or sometimes keep a level head. So in the space on the Internet, what we need to do going forward is it's OK to venture frustrations about um, your experiences with females or things that you don't like. But you have to provide a balance to say these are the things that I do like about females, particularly the things I do like about my black women. Since we since we as black people like to be um, race specific when we talk on the Internet and demographics. So we have to provide that balance. One person I can say that does that a, a good job at that is if you look at Helena Pascal's channel, she will talk about women. She'll talk about men. She talks about the good. She talks about the bad. So she gives both sides. And then sometimes I posted on her um, channels. There were things I disagreed with her about. There was things I agreed with her about. And hopefully she didn't take offense to that. But sometimes, you know, if somebody says something wrong, sometimes when you type things, People can read it the wrong way, and that's the wrong thing. That's the wrong part about emails, texts, when you can't communicate. They can't hear your tone. They can't hear certain things. So sometimes you read the tones into certain things. But I think she does a good job of providing a balance. Also, too, even for women, I'm going to say this. If women, if you're listening, if you're ever listening to specific men's channel, whether it's mine or any other man's, Sometimes you can't just listen to, well, I shouldn't even say sometimes, you can't just listen to one video. You have to at least search that person's channel and say, well, if that person is bashing this one, bashing women in this one particular video, let me look at some of their other content. Because it's similar when you're, when you're vlogging on an internet, when you're posting stuff on the internet, particularly on these YouTube channels or whatever other channels you have it, you're really what we're doing is putting together chunks of conversation or chunks of information because you can't just post. You can't just talk for 48 hours because really the individual could. We could talk for 48 hours about men versus women, you know, Mars versus Venus and all this other stuff. But I don't have that much time to sit up here. And who's going to watch a 48 hour video? Can you even post a 48 hour video? That The, the, the bite size on that thing must be huge. So we talk in chunks. So sometimes you have to say, okay, well, this chunk of this video that he's making, 
it's very negative towards women. Let me check out other videos to see if there's a balance. If you see that channel is just very negative towards women, then you can probably get an idea what that channel is about. Just like, for example, me, I looked at Cynthia G's channel because I had to say, this person can't be real what this person's talking about. This person can't feel like this all the time about black men. But sure enough, I looked at the channel and I think that I'm correct to say that, yes, she just had a natural dislike for black men, even though she has a son with a black male, which I found out doing a little bit of research online or so other people say. So I just want to let the men know what we need to do is, number one, provide that balance. You know, talk about things that we do like about our sisters, our black women or women in general. And then talk about things that we don't like, but do it in hopefully in a, a good constructive tone. When you see videos online from women posting negative stuff about black men and that they want to walk away and how they happy with doing this, this, that and the third with other men. I think what we probably need to do is just don't even address it. Don't even comment on it. We need to just say, OK, look. Well, I mean, I think, no, I think we can comment on it, but just comment on it constructively. If people are providing misinformation, we have to counter that with good information. But do it in a constructive manner and try to double read and triple read before we post. Or if you're going to post a response, do it in a good manner. I miss a brother online. He always wears, um, I think he wears suspenders and always like a, you know, a nice shirt and tie. He's very well-dressed brother, very articulate, smooth brother. I wish I could be more like him. Not to jock ride you, bro, but, you know, you do a very good job. Um, I forget your name, but um, he did a good job at debunking some statistics, and he always comes with great information. As opposed to me, I always shoot from the hip because uh, I'm just in the house talking because I have nothing else to do. Even though it's 70 degrees outside, I should be outside. I'm about to go out there, as a matter of fact, but... We need to just provide it and talk in a relatively great manner. And he actually, I forget his name. Um, I forget his name, but I'm, I can't think of it now. But he does a good job to me as opposed to not female bashing, but just providing good facts and information. Because we don't want to get to the point. And I know a lot of men, there's some men out there that don't want to say, these women aren't your sisters. You don't, they're not, you don't own them and they're not this. Listen, but look, we're all black. We came in this, you know, we're part of the same lineage. And I do look at them, not as my biological sisters, but I look at them as being an extension of me. They are, you know, what genetically God created for me. And that's why I love black women. And I think that all women, at least in America, in the Western region, have, you know, kind of gone astray a little bit with or, or been a, being a little excessive, and I think the internet plays a part of that, you know, looking at other women's lifestyle and just other stuff that's kind of polluted, you know, Western women, and it's starting to creep into other countries as well because the internet is all over. But I think that we as men can handle it a little bit better, um, and hopefully that will help us at least do our part in toning down the divide between men and women, specifically between black men and black women. Um, and if the women just don't want to listen, then so be it. At least we can say, look, we put our best foot forward. We try to reconcile with y'all. When you see, because I see some men talking about, yeah, black women are apologizing to black men. They trying to come back to us. Don't accept the apology. Why not? If a person apologizes to you, that's if a person offends you in real life, if you're not going to be a man, that person would have to do something totally egregious. That person would have to literally harm my mama for me to say, you've committed an unforgivable act against me. But if someone is seeing the error of their ways and saying, you know what, black men, you know, we were wrong. You know, black men, black women treated you wrong, but we're with you. Why not put that person on your side? I'd rather have more allies in this life than enemies. And trust me, I learned, especially when you've gone through divorce and should I say like um, domestic transitions that I've gone through, you don't want any more um, adversaries in this life. You want more allies. So if you can reconcile, reconcile. So that's all I have to say on the subject. I know I probably talked a little too long and I do apologize about that, but this is a political brown kid. Again, if you have comments with a man, woman, whomever, Drop a comment in the comment section. Definitely hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Peace. I'm out of here.